All right, welcome back to the Kaiser Report. Time now to go to Washington, D.C. and speak with Bill Still, the former newspaper editor and publisher, best-selling author, award-winning documentary, writer, director. His feature-length documentary, The Money Masters, is the 15th most viewed film on the internet in history. He also wrote and directed The Secret of Oz in 2010. Bill Still, welcome, a big welcome to the Kaiser Report. Oh, thank you very much for having me. All right, Bill Still, as a way into your films, The Money Masters and The Secret of Oz, I want to start by asking a question that will most interest our audience. Is there any gold in Fort Knox? And if not, who took it, why, and how? No, uh, it was, uh, and incidentally, I, I detail that in my new book, which is entitled No More National Debt. Uh, as far as we know, there's no gold left in Fort Knox. Uh, there was uh, one peak into Fort Knox in the 1970s. It was either 1973 or 74, uh, which was instigated by an uh, older friend of mine by the name of Ed Durrell. He spent 11 million of his dollars. He was a very wealthy Ohio industrialist trying to answer just this question. So they finally opened the doors. They were forced to open the doors in 73 or 74. There were a couple AP reporters, uh, a couple of congressman and the uh, uh, there's this famous picture of the director of the mint Mary Brooks standing in front of this wall of gold saying look it's all here but the problem was they only showed gold vault number 13 which is the smallest of all the gold vaults and they denied the existence of the central core vault uh, the AP reporter and photographer on the scene at the time reported that the gold which they showed had a strange orangish hue and uh, so therefore that means that it had a high copper content so probably what this was back in the 70s was the remnants of FDR's call-in of gold coins it was called coin melt if they had any good deposit gold which is 0.995 gold the only form of gold that's good for international trade they certainly would have showed a room full of that uh, my theory is uh, that it, despite the fact that the US government carries uh, the largest amount of gold on its books some 248 million ounces that they probably have zero except to some of this remnant uh, coin melt. Uh, it was, uh, it was well, well known at the time, local newspaper uh, coverage uh, of Fort Knox, Kentucky, where the gold was shipped out uh, by rail and truck to the uh, Federal Reserve Bank in New York. We don't know what percentage of it, but at least a large percentage was sent over to London uh, to try to uh, keep down the, pr the price of gold during something called the London Gold Pool. And probably once all the gold was cleaned out of Fort Knox, that's what, when Nixon closed the gold window, uh, and so that's what happened. Actually, it's funny that we're talking about gold, but um, you are against a gold standard and instead propose the uh, Monetary Reform Act. So walk us through that. Yeah, well, the first thing I want to, want to get into is, although I, I love Ron Paul, uh, the, the statement that he is making on the campaign trail right now is just absolutely ludicrous. And he, he claims that, and uh, this is a, almost a direct quote, that according to the U.S. Constitution, old and only gold and silver uh, can be money. And that's just not the case, Ron. I don't mind people investing in gold and silver. That's great. I don't mind having gold coins or silver coins as a complementary currency. But uh, what we need is debt-free, government-issued uh, money. Uh, you, and on top of that, you need two basic reforms. Number one, you need to eliminate government borrowing. Number two, you need to eliminate the ability of banks to lend money they don't have. This is called fractional reserve lending. This uh, re monetary reform alternative uh, or solution has been known uh, for many uh, uh, generations. And uh, I didn't invent it. It's nothing new. I just rediscovered it, and I'm trying to popularize it. Bill Still, so what your other aisle might suggest in this debate is that by having the fractional reserve banking system, you bring in something called the money multiplier effect. This creates some velocity in the economy, and people are borrowing, and the GDP is growing. 
So what, what do they have wrong? The problem with the, the money system is that right now, banks can lend uh, 10 to 12 times uh, the money they actually have, and that's if they follow the rules. We found out in, as a result of the 2008 debacle uh, during congressional hearings here that, in fact, uh, the big U.S. banks, uh, Morgan and Citibank, were leveraged 52 to 1. Fannie and Freddie were leveraged 72 to 1. And Goldman Sachs was leveraged 333 to 1. And about a year ago, President and Obama got on TV and said, oh, you know what, we just need to eliminate that nasty old reserve requirement altogether. In other words, 333 to 1 is not sufficient for these banks. Only infinity will do. Now, the problem is when you're leveraging money to that extent, uh, once the bubble pops, uh, then you're also leveraging on the way down. In other words, every, hunt, every dollars, uh, dollar that comes out of the economy is multiplied then by that multiplication factor, whether it's 10, 12, 52. 272 or 333. So we're going through a major uh, deleveraging of this huge bubble and it, the economy absolutely will not come back. Uh, that's why you see the specter for the first time of all this money being pumped in by the Fed and it not having the desired result on the economy. We've reached a point for the first time in history called debt saturation. The only way to get out is this monetary reform solution. Right, you mentioned Ron Paul, and he calls gold and silver the only constitutionally recognized form of money. You're saying that's not really necessarily true, and it brings up these ideas and questions about how money is created in the economy. The relationship in particular between the Treasury and the Federal Reserve Bank, this seems to be the most pernicious and weakest uh, point in the U.S. economy for certain. Could you walk us through how that works in terms of the difference between, let's say, the Treasury just issuing its own money? First, let's back up a little bit. You said it's not necessarily true. It absolutely is not true, and that's according to no less uh, than, than three um, uh, Supreme Court decisions. The, the problem with the Federal Reserve is it uh, merely because it operates under this name, the Federal Reserve System, it's a very thin veneer of a lie, and that's all it is that the Fed is actually part of the government and it's disguised, designed to make people think that the government is actually controlling or watching over the big banks when in fact you and I know that there's a revol revolving back door between the Fed and the big banks. The Fed is a captive of the big banks. Uh, the Fed does not create any money with the exception of QE1 and 2. Uh, all of our money is created as an interest bearing debt. We are literally, and this is worldwide, we are literally renting every dollar we have in circulation with the exception of coin money. Now this is a great deal if you can get it for the banks, but it's a horrible deal. Money should serve the public interest. I'm not interested in nationalizing banking, but I am interested in nationalizing money. We need a healthy, competitive commercial banking establishment that does lend at interest because if you don't charge interest because of the time value of money, you'll, there will never be any lending. But banks cannot control control the quantity of money, which they absolutely do today. Okay, over in the UK right now, they're having a big debate whether they should split the banks up uh, between the uh, speculative bank and the utility bank or the deposit bank in the relationship. The UK banking industry is lobbying hard that no ring fencing, as they call it. They don't want any ring fencing. It's going to destroy their economy. And yet it sounds like what you're talking about is that there should be a, a split up of this uh, function in the banking and when there should be a return to some form of banking which is strictly as a utility. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that, that function should, and banks should merely be deposit banks and intermediaries between borrowers and lending. Where you really get into trouble is uh, the fact that they can speculate on the market. That's, that only magnifies the problem of fractional reserve lending. But I mean, even splitting up that function is not going to do it because you still have banks creating 100% of the money and that's what the problem is. It, it's not what backs the money that's important. It's who controls the quantity. And the gold bugs incorrectly believe that gold will control the quantity. But on top of that, even if gold would control the quantity, gold certainly won't control the quantity of money under the current system that's lent out by the big banks using fractional reserve lending. Okay, so presumably the thought here being that gold could simply be used as a fractional reserve uh, as well. There's nothing to stop uh, a, a fractional reserve banking standard to emerge and 
repeating the exact same mistakes that we have currently, correct? Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And even if, even if they followed the rules, they're still, at minimum, le leveraging the money 10 to 12 times. It's not what backs the money, it's who controls the quantity. And if you're the in, sitting in the bank's driver's seat and you are controlling the quantity of a national money, then by de facto, you control the political situation as well. Because if the government you know, needs loans and you aren't willing to loan, uh, lend that money, then you know, you're know you in absolute control of the government. And that's the situation we find ourselves in today. It's a great job if you're, if you're sitting in the bank seat, but it's not, it's not a good deal for the average person. Money must serve the public interest. For our Twitter audience who Twittered these questions to Max Kaiser's Twitter account, a couple of questions, one from VIM Trading. The question is, say Ireland implemented a debt-free money supply, how would Bill Still propose it should be protected from banksters and speculators? Well, I mean, this is the basic function of government. You either, you either believe that uh, we the people are capable of self-governance or you don't. And I believe that the, the problem, the reason uh, governments worldwide are uh, seemingly no longer responsive uh, to the voting electorate is because they no longer own the money power. The banks own the money power. So step one is to, to uh, take Take back the money power, and then that will further that will uh, allow government freedom from this banker class, or to a certain uh, a much greater degree in any case. And uh, I think that's the first step. Another question from the Twitterosphere that was uh, popped up on the Max Kaiser Twitter account from C Thaxter to Bill Still: How can people best put through legislation for their own state banks? Legislation for uh, Washington failed, but. It's up again in 2012. What an excellent question, because right now, today, uh, the, the, uh, the State Bank of California, a study bill, uh, actually made it through both the upper and lower house of the California Assembly and now sits on Governor Jerry Brown's desk for signing. Uh, at, I believe it, uh, it happened about seven days ago, and he has 12 days to sign it. So there's only about five days left to get this signed. Now, it, that will not implement the state bank. It will implement the very first study commission, uh, giving some money to study the state bank of North Dakota. Uh, and so everybody in California needs to besiege Governor Brown's office at this point. So yes, this can happen. And the first step is to draft legislation so that your state legislatures uh, can apply money to study the Bank of North Dakota model, and they're perfectly willing to help any state. All right, Bill Still, that's all the time we have. Thanks for being on the Kaiser Report. Thank you. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. I want to thank my guest, Bill Still, the director of The Secret of Oz. If you'd like to send me an email, please do so at kaiserreport at rttv.ru. Until next time, this is Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.